To have an ADHD usually means you have low dopamine as a default state. And dopamine makes it possible for us to feel pleasure, to be motivated, to focus and to control our movements. So what does it mean to live a life where your default state is to have issues with pleasure, focus and impulse control? Hi guys, my name is Evie, I have a science degree in psychology and I'm also diagnosed with ADHD. So this video is something that I wish I have seen years ago and I made it because I do believe understanding the connection between dopamine and ADHD will make your life easier and some of the weird things will actually make more sense. There are three parts to this video. We have relationships, work and personal. Relationships, all right. Peace can be boring. People naturally need two types of engagement, physical and mental. What is physical engagement? This is anything that you do with your hands. Could be painting, could be editing a video, could be playing a game, could be being a bartender. And biologically speaking, we are designed to do a lot with our bodies. We have those 10 fingers and 10 toes being so flexible for a reason. Mental engagement is something that makes you think. It could be playing a strategy game. It could be designing a new product, could be preparing a presentation. And again, biologically, we we are so gifted. Our cognitive power is the highest we know on earth. So every human being has the need to be physically and mentally engaged. But let's say average human has that need here at level five. You, because you have low dopamine, and you're here with your dopamine, you have that same need at level seven. You have a higher need than an average person to do stuff and to use your head. Why am I saying this in the relationship domain? Well, because when you are in a relationship with somebody with whom your time together means watching a TV, this is not engaging you. When you watch TV, you receive entertainment, you consume entertainment, you're not doing anything yourself. Eventually, this is gonna understimulate you and it's not going to work out in the long term. Instead, what you can do is look for activities you can do together, anything from playing video games or board games together, to going to dance classes or hiking together, doing some cooking together, or even engaging in a mentally meaningful conversation where you sit down and you are challenged mentally to do and to be. This is going to give you that spike of dopamine that you need in order to stay engaged, interested in the relationship work. Okay, first of all, your ADHD brain gives you some superpowers. Do not look at your ADHD brain as a weakness. And by the way, if you want me to make a video how psychologists make a difference between a healthy brain or healthy behavior to unhealthy, disordered brain or behavior, let me know in the comments. But for the sake of this video, your ADHD makes you think very fast. It makes you move very fast. It makes you more creative, more innovative. So you need a job that allows for your talents to thrive. For example, think about artists, designers, people who are innovators like entrepreneurs, content creators. Think about a chef in the kitchen because that person needs to do a lot with their hands, but they also have to think ahead and be able to see the dots and connect them in order to produce the product at the end. Think also about emergency first responders and software developers. And the most important thing when it comes to dopamine, ADHD and work is that you have autonomy at your job because on one hand, you need to be able to create and you need to be motivated and challenged to think and to do better than last week and last month, otherwise you're gonna get bored. But also autonomy is important so that you are allowed to be. If somebody's all the time interfering your job, all the time interrupting you, given that you're already easily distracted, this constant distraction from outside will make your work environment very chaotic and you will be unable to develop and to really build things which will make you feel very overwhelmed and quickly burn out. Also, many ADHD people have the ability to hyper focus, which means you are capable of achieving a lot when you are let alone to yourself to produce the things that you are required to produce. On the other extreme, if there is no challenge, nobody is coming to check on you, there are no deadlines, nobody is really involved in the job, then you 
you will feel under challenged and under stimulated, which means you may withdraw and eventually you start underperforming because you're not really working up to your skills and talents. Personal, in this domain, we're gonna talk about two main issues that stem from your low dopamine. And the first is about controlling your impulses. Okay, so as an ADHD person, you're going to have the issue of being too creative, of having too many ideas, of having too much going on here and not being able to actually develop something to its end, to build something, because there's way too many alternatives and the fear of missing out is higher in your situation as compared to a non-ADHD person. But that's the irony. You have low dopamine, which means you have a higher need to achieve things, right? And this means to spike up your dopamine, but you're not achieving a lot because you're constantly distracted by all the alternatives going on in your head. How can you manage this? One thing is start writing down your ideas because ADHD people usually interrupt or are being very impulsive because they have a lot of thoughts and they fear that if they don't express them, they'll forget them. If you write them down, you give yourself that peace of mind that everything is there. Later on, you can go back reverse, cherry pick the really good ideas and work on them. The second thing will be to write down the steps that you need to achieve for a current project and execute some self-discipline and tell yourself, I will start the next project I have in mind only when the current project is at a state where I'm more or less automatically working on it. Meaning, if I'm good enough at this project, then I can delegate time and energy to this other project I would like to work on. The second personal issue with dopamine and ADHD is your emotional regulations. So you have those spikes, ups and downs of dopamine throughout the day. So you may even look like bipolar. For example, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Van Gogh, Picasso, now they're all discussed to be having to have had ADHD in the past. They seemed like bipolar back then, but they probably actually had ADHD because that expression of emotionality may look like you're moody, but it's not just that, it's just your dopamine being unstable. It's rather low all the time. You're trying to hype it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But what really happens with ADHD people is that they're naturally more sensitive. So if something good happens, you're really excited and you seem hyper. If something bad happens, you can really go down. You can easily cry. In that sense, also ADHD people have problems with people pleasing, which is called rejection sensitive dysphoria, meaning you you know already that you'll be really hurt by criticism, that you're very emotional and that you will react with a lot of pain towards a problem. So in order for you to avoid that, it becomes very important to you to satisfy other people's needs and desires. One way to help yourself with this is work towards self-confidence. I know it's not easy, but that's your way out of this situation. Your ADHD brain is very powerful, very talented. It's not a weakness. And yes, your natural low state of dopamine can get you in trouble. So that's why understanding that game with the dopamine can help you gain back control. I have a video on how dopamine works. I recommend you watch it, it's right here. I also made a video how to deal with ADHD if you don't want to rely heavily on your medication, right here. Both of them are made with the idea to help. So hopefully they do and I'll see you in the next video, bye.